From the early 1930s until the more recent advent of digital video and digital cinema, all or most motion pictures were on 24 frames per second. So let me show you what 24 frames per second looks like. This is as simple as it comes. It's just a sphere moving across the screen from left to right. There's one frame, or one drawing rather, for every frame. And this is uh, in animation terms called animating on ones. That means there's one drawing per frame. Well, fortunately for us, sometime in the 1930s, the animators realized that you didn't have to animate on ones. You could animate on twos, and this meant they would do one drawing and hold that drawing for two frames. Let's see what that looks like. So this is how it feels. You notice it might feel a little bit jaggier. And the weirdest thing will happen to you once you look at enough cartoons on twos or on 12 frames per second. After a while, this jagginess will disappear. It's something that your brain simply adjusts to. You get used to seeing 12 FPS or on twos. A lot of Japanese animation and lower budget TV animation is on threes. So these different frame rates exist and they're very useful and it's good to know what people are talking about when they say it's on ones, it's on twos, it's on threes. It has a quite specific meaning. So that said, let me show you uh, an extension of this and show you what these different frame rates look like and what they feel like. So here I've created a little animation and it's the same ball that we've already seen and I've created six versions. On the top, eight frames per second or on threes if you were on 24 FPS, the kind of thing you would see on a lower budget TV cartoon. Below that at 10 FPS, below that 12, then 15, then 24, then 30. Now as you can see, 30 at the bottom is smooth. 24 just above is pretty smooth and 8 FPS you can almost feel it clunking across the screen. So I like to avoid 8. I think 8 is often pushing it. Uh, the tighter your drawings are, the closer spaced they are, the more you can get away with slower frame rates. And in general, the, the more space between the drawings, the, the more urgently you're going to need to do it on 24 or 30. So again, this is something to watch and feel. And uh, you'll rapidly develop a sense if this is ever a factor in your work of what you might or might not be able to get away with. Most of you are probably working on computer programs now and it's you're already living on 30. This isn't relevant. But there are those strange little jobs that come down the pipe from time to time. They do exist and somebody will say, yes, the frame rate on this is 12 FPS or 10 FPS. So heads up and be warned for just exactly what that looks like and what it means to you as an animator. There's one other small thing to be aware of when you're working at 24 or 30 FPS. Even though most projects now are 30, again, you will occasionally encounter 24. So what this means is if you ever have an animation that has to hit specific beats, there's some things that are better in 30 than in 24 and vice versa, because you can only divide certain numbers into 24 and certain numbers into 30. That's just mathematics. So let's say you have a scene that has a, a specific beat four times a second. Not a problem at 24. It can be divided with absolute precision, but you can't do that at 30. You can't divide 4 into 30. You'll get 7.5. So if you want to do an animation that has a 4 beats per second animation and you're working in 30, you have to cheat one of those frames. You've got to move one of them from frame 8 to frame 7. It won't be precise, but nobody will really notice, but it might be a slight nuisance factor when you're animating. If I had a project that was entirely built around somebody animating or walking on a one quarter second or four beats per second animation, I would want to animate that on 24 FPS just for the ease. But, you know, this is just one of those small things to keep in mind. And it really only comes up for me as a nuisance factor when I'm doing walk cycles, because when I do walk cycles, I like to put my contact position here. That's when the foot first hits the ground. And then the opposite contact position here and the passing position exactly between them. It's just really easy. And so when I work in 30, I have to cheat it. I have to cheat my passing pose onto frame 7 or frame 8. It's not a big thing, but it's just one other thing just to be conscious about when you do start working with cycles at these different frame rates.